Hi guys, this is Dr. Ben Benham, board certified dermatologist from Los Angeles, California. Uh, welcome to another video. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about hair loss. I'm going to be talking about the cause, the different cause of hair loss, and a different approach to hair loss that most people have not really heard. So, I, I see a lot of patients every day for hair loss. So the question always comes like, why am I losing my hair? Well, there are many, many reasons why people lose their hair. Stress, what have you done to your hair? You know, are you pulling it? Are you dyeing it? What is your diet? Are you eating a lot of whey protein isolates? Are you doing all those, uh, are you doing creatine? Are you doing L-arginine? You know, are you um, playing so much with your hair? Or are you going, are you going through like a lot of stress? A lot of those factors do really basically affect um, how your hair does, how it looks, uh, and you know, diet has a lot to do with it as well. But it really also comes down to really two factors. And by understanding these two factors, we kind of also understand the treatments about them. So one, uh, as pretty much a lot of people have heard about, is testosterone getting covered with DHT, what we call dihydrotestosterone. So in male pattern of baldness or thinning, there is an enzyme in the scalp that converts your testosterone to DHT. And increased DHT will basically cause hair loss through miniaturizing your hair. That means, you know, your hair shrinks down. So that has been the predominant theory of how, you know, guys lose their hair, is the DHT. And that's why, you know, finasteride, Propecia has become very popular because Propecia is a DHT blocker. But have you guys ever thought why is it that Propecia, finasteride, doesn't always work for everyone? I mean, why is that? Why isn't 100% DHT is the culprit, why doesn't it work for everyone? The reason is because uh, it's not the only reason why people lose their hair. Uh, a lot of people also use Rogaine, which is minoxidil, on their scalp. And Rogaine could actually cause hair growth. And a lot of times people combine finasteride with Rogaine together. And in fact, we have a topical combination that combines the two. Why does Rogaine, also known as minoxidil, why does it work? There are a lot of theories out there, but one of the theory is that uh, when you apply Rogaine to your scalp, it is, it's a vasodilator, so by dilating the blood vessels, there's more blood flow basically to the scalp, and as a result, uh, it causes hair growth. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about the minoxidil component. So there's a theory called the scalp tension theory that unfortunately most people have not heard about. What the scalp tension theory says is that when, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people have heard about this, they get stressed and all of a sudden, you know, when they go through a stressful episode, they lost, they start to lose their hair. I mean, why is that? Is that just a coincidence? The reason is because when people go through stressful events or they get really mad and stressed, they, the scalp muscles tense up. When it tense up, it basically basically constricts the blood vessels, and by doing so, it uh, basically cuts off the blood flow to the hair. And by doing that, uh, it could actually, studies have shown that it reduces the oxygen flow, the, the, the oxygen concentration where the hair follicles are, and there's some studies suggesting that it could actually increase uh, DHT level in those areas. Uh, and as a result, that could lead to hair loss. So the, the theory has, this scalp tension theory has been around for a long time. A lot of people really do not believe in it. Uh, but how do we prove it? How do we prove that scalp tension theory could actually really work? Uh, again, I want to emphasize what happens when you decrease the blood flow to a scalp. Again, oxygen goes down, the issue level may go up, but also the converse is also true. When you increase blood flow, to the scalp area, it washes away that DHT. So your DHT concentration decreases. So how do we prove this? So there are actually a couple articles, uh, and I'm going to be going through one of them. Uh, there are actually two articles in the literature where um, basically they try to address this question. So the idea is that if you could relax the muscles completely on your scalp and increase the blood flow, then the hair should come back. That's the theory. How do we prove that? So there are two articles where they said they actually inject Botox on the scalp. Now Botox does not cause hair growth. 
But if you inject it at the correct places on the scalp, it could actually relax all these muscles on the scalp, thus reducing the tension. And by doing so, it could actually increase blood flow. And by increasing blood flow, you increase the oxygen out of the hair follicles, and also you're, you're washing away some of the DHT. So if that theory is true, and if you were to do Botox correctly on the scalp, then your hair should grow back. So I'm going to basically kind of go through a study that was published, I think it was 2017, in the Journal of Cutaneous Basically Surgery. It's called a pilot study to evaluate the effectiveness of Botox in, in the treatment of androgenic alopecia in males. And I'm going to show you some of their before and after photos. So, so this is a patient, that's the before photo. And again, these are not my patients from the study. Before and after, where basically they did Botox in a very specific way. And they realized that by reducing the tension on the scalp, hair grew out. I'll show you, I'll show you a couple more photos. Here we go. So again, some of them are a little more effective, some of them are a lot more obvious than others. This is actually a pretty good photo. Before is on your this side and the after is on the left side. That's actually quite impressive. A lot of hair growth and this was just Botox and the photos were taken six months later. I want to show you another one. Before and after. That's before and after. And this is Botox done on the scalp in such a way where it's reducing tension on the scalp. By reducing tension, it increases blood flow, and the blood flow basically brings more oxygen, more nutrients, and also washes away the DHT, and it causes hair growth. Now, you're gonna say, wait a second, well, how come all the hairs didn't grow up? Well, the reason is because, again, you're only targeting the vasoconstriction aspect. You're not targeting the DHT aspect. And this goes back to what I said initially, a lot of people do finasteride and minoxid together because you get better synergistic result. The finasteride hits the DHD production and the minoxid causes vasodilation, increasing blood flow, oxygen, and thus by reducing the DHD by washing it away. When you combine those two modalities together, you get better results. In this clinical study, 80% of patients said that they had really good improvement of hair loss. Uh, that means cause having hair growth, so, which is pretty impressive. In our office, we do do Botox, uh, and hopefully I'm gonna sh have you guys see some of my before and after photos of my patients where we've done Botox on the scalp. We will also begin to combine Botox with stem cell in our office to even get uh, stem cell slash PRP injections to even get better effectiveness of hair growth on the scalp. Anyways, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed basically this uh, video. And if there's any questions, please send us an email. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.